All right, now we're going to talk about Unit 2, Section 2, Congruent Parts, and we're going to be focused on checking to see if the shapes are congruent. Okay, so we're going to use a highlighter to help us um, see if the, um, if the sides are marked correctly to make this true. Okay, so AB is the first two letters. I'm going to hide like that in yellow. Over here, the first two letters are FE. Okay, do those look the same length? Yes, let's continue. BC is the second two letters. So BC is this line right here. And ED is the second two letters. ED is that one there. Okay, and then if I use the first letter and the last letter, A and C, should match up with the first letter and the last letter, F and D. Okay. So this looks like it would be true. So if I'm checking to see if they are congruent, I would say true. Congruent. Okay. Let's look at the next one. AB is congruent to PQ. Okay. Um, BC is congruent to QR. Okay. Um, CD is congruent to um, RS. Notice that the, they have to be in the right order. Blue, pink, yellow, blue, pink, yellow. All right. Let's see if I know the color. Um, purple. DE and ST. Okay, and what next? Blue, A and E, and P and T. All right, so all the letters, it looks like it's rotated a little bit, but they all go around in the correct order. Blue, pink, yellow, purple, green. Blue, pink, yellow, purple, green. So this is true congruent. Now, if the order, if the letter are not correct, then we know there's something wrong. Hmm. The order of the letters is super important. Okay. So look here. J and K is the first two letters. Notice it's the hypotenuse of this triangle. And Q and R is uh, the first two letters. And that is not the hypotenuse. So... Uh, we know this is not true. So the order is not correct. So, um, so this is not true. And let, but let's let's try to figure out what it should be. Um, J and K should be congruent to S Q. So I'm going to rewrite this. We're trying to figure out what J, K, L should be. So this S, Q should be the first two letters if J and K are first two. K and L, this is guy right here. So the that should correspond with Q and R. And lastly, J and L, which is the first and the last, that should be congruent to S and R, which is the first and the last. So if this had been here, then it would be true. But these or, the order of these letters makes it not true. So it would be true if I said J, K, L is congruent to um, triangle S, Q, R this would be true. Okay. Right, now we're going to look at our last example. Okay. So um, we had an example like this, um, but this picture should make it a little more clear than the example that we did. Okay, let's pretend that you're given an angle 
in an angle. If you're not able to draw this in your notes, um, uh, th that's okay. You, but I want to make sure that you understand what's going on. So what I did here is to figure out this angle, on my aligned notebook, I just drew a dotted line here because I know we're going to start off with an angle. And to figure out the measurement, I got my protractor here. I have the dot here at the center, and I made it 30 degrees. So see the 30? And so I put a dot here at 30, and then I just drew a line here. And I drew a line that was an inch and a half. So I got to where an inch, and then I went to, I went an inch and a half. Okay, and then same thing here. I went, I found a point, and then I made a, a dot here at 30, and then I measured a line that was an inch and a half. Okay, and so then I've got my angle and my side relationship. So this angle is congruent to this angle. This side is congruent to this side. Now, if I'm told that this here is one inch, I could go here and then I could say, okay, I've got one inch here, but here I could go one inch here also. So what's the difference between this triangle and this triangle? Well, clearly you can just look at them and say, uh -huh, they're not the same. But, um, so this is called an ambiguous triangle. And what it, what it means is if you're given limited uh, congruent parts information, that doesn't always mean that it's congruent. Um, so in this example, we're shown that two sides are congruent and one angle is congruent. It's called an ambiguous triangle, side-side angle, and that it does not always mean that it's true. Sometimes it might be true, but it's not always. So like one thing I could do is if I had a compass and if I drew an arch from here to here, this tells me where the other red line could be. So from here to here, if I drew an arch with that measurement, I know that if at this point right there, if I drew, uh, since the arch goes right there, if I had drawn a red line from here to the purple line, then these two triangles would be congruent. But if I drew the one centimeter mark here, then it's not congruent. Okay, if you have trouble copying this last page, don't worry so much. Um, I don't think we're going to put this on the test. Maybe it might be extra credit if we do. Anyways, hope you have a good day.